Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So back to our GraphQL series. And today we are going to talk about three important things in GraphQL. In the GraphQL first, we are going to talk about what do you mean by schema? Then uh, we will see that, okay, what do you mean by query? And then we will see the concept of mutation also. Okay. Three important things and very simple thing. So as I told you in the last video that whenever there is a client, this is the GraphQL client, let's see. And this client can have the mobile phone, iOS or Android or any web application. This client is actually sending the request to the GraphQL server. This is my GraphQL server, right? And let's see, this server is somewhere connected to maybe some database or the actual data is available here in the form of rows and columns, or maybe this is a SQL database or maybe no SQL database. So client is sending the request uh, to the GraphQL server. This is my GraphQL uh, server. And then at the GraphQL server, what exactly the developers will do, they have to define one schema here, right? For example, let's see, there is a user type, as I told you. And in this particular user type, I want to have a couple of information that, okay, user name, for example, it should be a string type, right? And then let's see, age should be with the integer type, like that. And then maybe some other attributes and respective their data types that we have to define over here. So that whenever a user will send a quick create a query over here from the user side, he will pass out. Okay, fine. I'm looking for a user and I'm looking for this particular name and I'm looking for this particular age number of users that I'm looking for. Let's see. So we will send this particular query to the GraphQL server, GraphQL server saying, okay, fine. This is the type this guy is looking for. And the schema is already defined at my site. And then it will check. Okay, fine. This is string. I have to return and for age, I have to return integer over here. This data will be uh, coming from the database. I'll check, okay, fine. Give me all the users. For example, let's see, there are 20 users are available. So we will get a complete user information from here and the name and the age we will be getting. It will create one JSON payload in the form of response and the same JSON payload will be given to the uh, user back, right? So if you see this particular diagram, the schema definition is also called SDL. I mean, this is called the GraphQL SDL language. So here I have created two objects or two types. You can see that type person where name can be string and this not mean this is a non nullable field. It means this value cannot be null. It's a mandatory field and age is equal to let's see integer type again, not nullable. So here I have defined basic uh, two variables over here and their respective types over here. And these variables are also called fields and this is called an object person object. And another type that I have created, let's see, a person can have uh, multiple posts also. So for example, let's see simple separate uh, type I have created post and every post will have its own title. That will be a string and non nullable means it cannot be null. Then if you really want to create a relationship between these two things, that is what the GraphQL is all about. So if you see adding a relationship over here, so let's see for a person, we have name string age equal to integer, a person can have multiple blog posts. So that's why I have written post colon post and then it cannot be nullable. And then I have written in a bracket over here in a square bracket. It means this is a kind of list over here. Same thing we get it in JSON array in uh, JSON objects, or maybe array list in some other programming languages. It's a kind of list. It means a post can have multiple uh, posts. That's why we are creating a collection or list over here like that. And then we talk about the post. Every post will be having its own title. That will be the string type. And every post is having one author. And what kind of author? The author will be the person type. So this is called the object type schema. And uh, these schema is called the scalar type schema, like primitive data types that we have in Java, right? That integer, double, Boolean, such things that we can define it over here like that. Fine. So I'll show you one uh, schema basics from directly from the Apollo, uh, you know, uh, GraphQL uh, documentation. They have really good documentation about the schema. See the same example that we have taken it from here. <clears throat> it's saying that there are two types that I have created. Okay. So first of all, GraphQL specification includes a human readable schema definition language, which will behave like a contract between your client and the server. Fine. <clears throat> then we are saying, okay, this is type book and type author a book will be title and author will be author type. So, and then what type of author author is another type, which can have one name and which can have multiple books over here. Book means this is another book type. Uh, we can have it over here in the list like that. So we can create a relationship between these two guys like that. Fine. So these are the supported uh, GraphQL uh, <coughs> categories. 
uh, scalar type, object type, query type, mutation type, input type, and the enum type. So let's talk about the first one that is the scalar type. A scalar type is just similar to your primitive types in your uh, favorite programming language like we have integer, that is your 32 bit integer, floating numbers, string values, a boolean true or false. And then there is one more attribute that is called ID. ID type means a serialize as a string. It will create one unique identifier. It will create one unique uh, dynamic ID. It will be created whenever you are going to create any, any user or any entity. So that particular ID will be generated by the GraphQL server automatically. Okay. And it's not intended uh, to be human readable. Then we have the object type as I told you that, okay, yeah, we have, let's see two uh, objects over here, book and author or two types over here. So let's see this title is having simple primitive type, but author field is having author type. Author is another object over here. So this is pointing to this particular author. This author is having one name as a string. And then this again, having the books field and books field value is what book array. It means number of books. You can take it from here like that. So this is about the object type. Then we have another one is that is a query type. Query type is very simple. Once again, it will start like this type and Q capital query. So let's see every book will be having number of objects from the book. Every author's field will be having number of author from the author or from the author object. So what exactly the user will say that? So if you talk about the typical REST API in the REST API endpoint, it will be like this API slash books and API slash authors. It means two times we have to hit the API in REST API automation or in the REST API uh, call I'm talking about. So you have to call this API then to get the books and you have to call this author API to get the authors, right? So in the GraphQL, what you just need to do in the GraphQL, the client will say, okay, fine. I want get books and author. From the books, you give me the title and from the authors, you give me the name. That's it. This is what the query I'll be sending. And then the, the data will be written back. So only one request that we have to send from the client side. We don't need to send multiple requests from the client side. Then the data will be coming in the form of JSON object like that for data wrapped with the books. We have number of uh, books available, number of authors available like that. Fine. So see this, this is the query I'll be sending. Let's see another query I'll be sending from the client side, get books, books, title, and give me the author name. So one simple query I'll be sending from the client side and the no need to send multiple requests separately for books and separately for author like that. And this is a response that I'll be getting it over here. I'll show you some practical examples also. Then we have the mutation type. Mutation type is always remember once again, very important. The mutation type means query type first we have already seen that. Okay. This is for the get. It means this is for the retrieve the data from the server, right? So we have four operations. Okay. In, in API, we have create retrieve and then update and delete. So retrieve is done by query. We have to pass the query and server will give it back to you. Mutation means you have to create, you have to update and delete. These three operations in GraphQL is called mutation, right? So you can, um, uh, create just like a post call, update just like a put call and delete just like a delete call in REST API. So here we call mutations. There are three types of mutation we will talk about. So it is saying it's similar in structure and purpose of the query type. It is used to see this. This is a typical mutation. I'm going to create type mutation. I want to add a book over here. And what are the different fields that you want to pass? I want to pass title, whatever the title will be in the string format and author will be the string type and then it will return what? So after colon, it's saying it's returning book. So when you create the, when you, when you add a book over here, this is just like you are going to create one book over here with these two attributes. And then I will send you as a response at the book object over here. So response type will be book over here. So after colon, you will see response type. Okay. So the structure of mutation is like that. So from the, uh, see from the query side, when I say that, okay, fine. I'll say mutation, create book, add book title is uh, something like this Fox in socks author is Mr. some doctor or something like this, and then title and the author name. So this is the query I'll be sending from the uh, client side. And this is the response I'll be getting that. Okay, fine. This book with this title and with this author got created. So in the response, it will tell you, this is the object you will be getting it. So this is called a mutation. Mutation means we are going to create. Same thing you can update also and you can delete also. So I'll show you some uh, examples for the update and delete as well. So this is the basics of uh, remember guys that the basics of uh, um, 
uh, schema, the GraphQL schema. There are another type of also there that's not that important, the input type and the enum type that we can talk about maybe somewhere later. But uh, these three things, scalar type, object type, query type, and the mutation type, these are the four important uh, GraphQL schema that you have to understand. So now let's see some uh, different type of query and the mutation types. Some, some basic example, let's see that. So as I told you in the last example, guys, that in the last video also, that you can simply go to hasura.io and this is a graph IQL. This is a graph IQL is a, I would say a tool or maybe a graphical interface, which where you can execute the queries and just like a Swagger APIs, right? We have Swagger uh, for the REST API, same thing you can do it over here. Uh, our auto suggestions will be there and you don't need to write manually. That will be very handy. So whenever you're working on any GraphQL projects, uh, the developers will give you uh, set up this uh, graphical. This is also called see this graph IQL. It's not GraphQL. This is graph IQL. This is also called graphical. Okay, they will set up and then uh, whatever the objects that you have created, it will be displayed over here. So let's say I just simple want to hit a query. So simple go to users and I want to hit a query with ID and name and you want to limit also. So put a limit uh, attribute here. I want to get only 10 users. So send this request to the server and you will get only 10 users over here like that. You want to add their to do's list also in to do's list. What do you want in to do's list? You just give me all the a title and then you hit it. So you can see that, okay, every user is having ID name and it's to do's list. Every user is having ID name and to do's list over here and to do's list is what is an array type. So that's why we are getting in the square bracket like that from here to here, right? So to do's is a separate type. So that's why it separate body will be created inside the main user body over here. And from the user, we want only ID and name. And then along with that user, every user will be having some to do's list. So this is the query structure will be created automatically. And then you can simple do that. Let's say I want to add one more attribute next line and you simple write created add remove it from here. And then you simple run it again. So along with that title, it will tell you created add date also like that. So it's very simple to create the query from graph uh, graphical and then you simple hit it fine now let's see about the mutations mutation as i told you only create update and delete retrieval will be done by the query type uh, query type schema and the for mutation we have to use it for create update and delete so for example let's see i want to update some to do's i want to insert some values i want to delete some to do's so it's very simple let's see insert to do's you want to insert the to do's in that case affecting uh, rows and the returning and uh, returning what when you create it in the return you just give me id and the title and uh, let's see object star mandatory so simple pass object and we have to pass a title over here so let's say i simple write naveen a list over here or naveen items something like this that see i have created so this will be starting with the mutation and it's saying insert to do's means we are going to use a post call kind of concept and the title is equal to the bean item. And then in the return, what do you do? ID and title. So when you run this query, so what will happen? You can see that, okay, ID is there automatically. It will be created. Some random ID will be created. It's saying affected rows are number one, only one row got affected. I mean, one row got created and then the title is equal to Naveen item like that. So here with the help of mutation, I have created a a new what a new to do over here like this same thing you can delete to do also if you really want to delete so let's try it is deleting or not so i simply say delete what first of all that you give me affected rows and returning uh, returning the same id and uh, which title and uh, where we have to select a mandatory field over here where I just want to delete on the basis of ID, which is ID is equal to what ID is equal to four pi four five four four six. So let's see this is getting deleted or not. So it's saying yes, deleted rows affected road one and then it got deleted and it's saying in the response. Okay, fine that uh, Naveen title this Naveen item as a title got deleted like that. Okay, if you really want to hit the query with the to do's once again, you can check cross check. Okay. It got deleted or not. Same thing like update user. You can also check insert to do's insert or uh, delete to do's update to do's all these things. You can do it over here. So mutation is used for you can play it guys that uh, there are so many examples are available. You can simply play with the query and just hit the query and get the response. Same query you can hit in your postman also. Let's see. Uh, let's try with the postman also. Let's see. I want to insert a to do. 
So again, I'll simple click on this and let's see this time I'm writing that uh, um, my new item, something like this, let's say I want to create. So I just simple copy this particular mutation query from here and I'll go back to my postman. Uh, first of all, that is the query. So let's write a query over here like this. Fine. Let me just remove this. And after that, uh, go to your headers and content type is this and we have to pass the latest bearer token. So this is my latest bearer token. Just copy this and then you hit this query. So let's see this, uh, uh, whatever the body, the GraphQL that you have to select it from here and paste your query over here. So make sure go to body and select GraphQL and send the request. So when you send the request, it's saying, okay, hey, my new item got created and the ID is this. So same thing you can hit from the postman also like that. So ultimately when you work in the real time projects, you have to create this particular query, send the request and get the response. And the same query you can hit with the rest assured or maybe some other client that you are using it that also you can do that. Same thing you can do the performance testing also with the help of JMeter. Okay guys, so this is about the mutations. Okay. So that's all for this particular video. I hope you liked it. Please go to this particular uh, URL, prepare some queries, practice some queries. It will take some time to adjust with the syntax and everything, but it will be super easy after that. Try to understand what do you mean by schema, what do you mean by type and everything. I'll share this particular documentation also in the comment section. Just go and check it over there. And then it's simple. Just read this and uh, a lot of good things are available. You can just refer this uh, Apollo document directly from here. Thank you so much, guys. Please subscribe to the channel. A lot of good things are coming on this channel in future. So please subscribe, press the bell icon to get the notification for the next video. And uh, <clears throat> I'll see you in the next topic. Till then, take care and God bless you all.